Hey, what's up? Welcome back for another video. Thank you for being here. Let's get started. Now, while I was doing the Avril Lavigne video reactions, this band's name came up in the comments section a handful of times. Today, I'm sitting down to listen to The Open Door by Evanescence. Fallen is actually one of the first albums that I ever owned. I had that sh on loop as a child, had it memorized from start to finish. I don't know what about it really spoke to elementary school me, but oddly enough, that's kind of where my journey with Evanescence started and finished. I never really heard any of their other stuff until today, so let's get into it. This album has 13 tracks. Out of those 13 tracks, I only know one of them so far, which is obviously Call Me When You're Sober. Kind of a hit. Actually, it really was a hit. Every other song will be brand new to me. This is my reaction for The Open Door by Evanescence, and we're going to get started right now. Track number one, Sweet Sacrifice. She has such a powerful voice, it's crazy. And it's crazy that we don't, I just feel like she's not being talked about enough for how epic she is. I am one minute into this album. <laughs> one minute, that's all it took for me to feel the need to say this. I don't know if I remember her really going into her head voice much on Fallen. That feels new to me. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Goes hard. Okay, so <laughs> when did Fallen come out? 2003. So it's been almost 20 years actually since I would have purchased and religiously listened to Fallen and nothing's changed. I feel like I'm right back in my hometown popping this in a CD player. I have no idea what it is about this music that really speaks to me. Maybe we'll discover that in our journey today. Badass start to the album. Let's move on. Track number two is Call Me When You're Sober, a song I know very, very well. So we're gonna skip that one. So this is track number three, Weight of the World. This sort of like almost muted vocal that she has going on, nobody does that like she does. Whenever I hear anyone else do it, it immediately reminds me of Evanescence. You know this little vocal effect I'm talking about? She invented that, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> That's hardcore. Wait, if you love me, then let go of me. I won't be held down by who I used to be. She's nothing to me. A bad bitch mantra, to be honest. Is that her? Wait. <laughs> this opera vocal in the back? Miss Amy Lee, please. I mean, where's the Grammy? She is not going to let up on this album, not once, I fear. I know I've been talking about Amy and her voice a lot, but I do also want to shout out the rest of the members of the band. The instrumental is also going hard as f and I don't want that to go unrecognized. It's insane. We are definitely three for three so far. Ah, Evanescence, I have missed you so much. I say that as if this hasn't just been on streaming services the whole time. And I could have listened to this at any point in the last 20 years. All right, we're moving on to track number four. This is Lithium. Half of me thought we were getting the ballad of the album. We were going in a my immortal direction. Half of me did not believe that for one second. I knew it was coming. It still scared the shit out of me. I'm being played with. Uh. I really live for these like super sad ass songs. 
Because <laughs> if I had to guess, I would say a good like 95% of their discography, maybe more, is just heartbreaking. And while I get a lot of pleasure out of listening to it, I do hope that she's okay. <laughs> I hope these don't all come from personal experience. I hope that she's had some good times too. <laughs> but it kind of doesn't seem like it. She is the lithium trapped inside the Duracell AA battery that is charging the relationship. She was like, I can't be out here trapped in this ass relationship. I look like the Energizer Bunny. She talks about how he feels empty and cold and that in turn made her feel empty and confused and lost. That's a pretty fucked up place to be. If that energy is not being reciprocated, run for the hills, girl. Melodically, it's not my favorite, but I do really love her voice on this one. I won't shut up about the vocals. I won't. All right, this is track number five, Cloud Nine. This one actually really reminds me of Bring Me To Life. What I was, it's funny because what I was gonna say is so far this album does feel very much like a continuation or a sequel of Fallen, just like sound wise. However, I do feel like production has definitely leveled up and improved a lot since then. Or maybe I just haven't listened to Fallen very recently. I would have to go back and listen to Fallen again and kind of compare after listening to this, but it feels like they've sort of perfected the sound that they were crafting on Fallen so far. Lyric assessment, please hold. If I fall and all is lost, no light to lead the way. I never thought that it would end this way. Remember that all alone is where I belong. Eee. I do like the contrast between this one and the last one. The last one, she seemed very like confused and unsure of her place. As far as she seemed very unsure of being alone. And this one is sort of the opposite where she's like proudly standing and being by herself. <laughs> I love that like haunting background vocal. Wow, loved Cloud9. Evanescence is one of those bands that really creates like a whole atmosphere around their music. This world they've created and this story that they're telling, it's like an entire experience in itself. Cloud9, one of my favorites I think so far. All right, this is track number six, Snow White Queen. Mm. Do you hear what I mean about the production? There's like little details and things going on in the back that make it feel a little bit more evolved, I think. I don't really know what's going on, hang on. <laughs> you belong to me, my snow white queen. There's nowhere to run, so let's just get it over. Soon I know you'll see. You're just like me, don't scream anymore, my love, cause all I want is you. So is she snow white in this story? I'm getting lost in the Disney metaphor. I don't really remember what happened in Snow White. That was the one of the poison apple, right? <laughs> I feel like she's playing with her voice more and I really I really like that. I'm trying to figure out who this song is directed at. <laughs> the bridge of this song into the final chorus, 12 out of 10. Quite epic, if you ask me. If there's one thing that I really, really love, it's a power bridge. Obviously, Miss Amy Lee rarely lets me down in that department. This was a great example of that. If anyone understands the story of this song or the concept behind this song, please explain in the comment section below. All right, we're moving on to track number seven. I don't know how to say this word. I think it's lacrimosa. I probably said that wrong. But let's hear it. Some strings. Ooh. 
Okay. Do you see what I mean about the atmosphere? I don't know why I always have to do that. The ambiance of the song. There's always this lingering, like haunting, creepy, like you got lost in the dungeon of a hidden temple vibe. You know what I mean? <laughs> this scary ass choir we have going on, it's giving final boss battle. I love the guitar solo. Game over. What does this word mean? Hold on. Oh, it's a Latin word that means tearful. So what I'm getting is sort of like a, this is over, we're both moving on. I'm feeling free, I'm feeling better. You should do the same. That seems pretty mature. I can get behind that. The orchestra of this one is wild. Like I was saying, the ambiance of this song is so strong. They do this to an extent in a lot of their songs, but this is like peak evanescence ambiance right here. <laughs> one of the more memorable songs so far, I would say, just because it sounds significantly different than the rest. All right, this is track number eight, Like You. Ooh, that's not where I thought we were going. What? Oh sh did this person die? The instrumental on this one is really interesting. Quite grim, I would say. <laughs> the instrumental really was quite uh, all over the map, really. It started with just that sort of like frantic guitar behind her voice, but then they added a harder guitar, but then the violin came in. It was kind of back and forth between feeling intense and feeling soft, which I think that they did on purpose. Feels like one of the heaviest songs on the album so far. One of my lesser favorites, but it was interesting and I appreciate it for sounding unique. All right, this is track number nine, Lose Control. I need a snack. <laughs> Rule followers, please rise. This one's for us. <laughs> All I do is mind my business and keep to myself. Maybe just once, just once, I should lose control. Like set something on fire or something. I don't know. Oh, the whisper. This one I think is just relatable. <laughs> I think this is just one of those songs, you know, where you're kind of at your wits end. You're at a breaking point. Just want to lash out, no consequences. It is funny to me that a song called Lose Control is actually one of the most like toned back and calmer songs on the album. All right, this is track number 10, the one and only. Nope, it's not. The only one. <laughs> a duck? This one sounds kind of familiar. I can't tell if I've heard it before or if it just sounds like a different song, but really, really, really love the chorus. Chorus. Yeah, I wish that the verses were a little more interesting to me. There's something about them that kind of loses me a little bit, but I really, really, really 
fuck with this chorus. Conceptually, it's great. I mean, whenever there's a song that reminds people they're not as alone as they may feel, uh, that's something I support. Maybe the verses will grow on me. I hope that they do, because I really like this chorus. All right, this is track number 11, Your Star. I loved that moment. Wow. The bills. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you. First like minute, minute and a half of this song, I was like, oh, I'm over it. We're kind of getting to that point in the album where if stuff doesn't really excite you, it will bore you entirely. The way that this song grows and continually develops makes it so interesting to listen to. And putting this one at the end was very smart. This is one that I really wanna listen to with headphones because there's so much going on, a lot of structural changes throughout the song. This one really won me over. I thought I wasn't gonna really give a f about it. <laughs> but I just kept getting more and more interested which does not happen a lot. So kudos to you, your star. You really are a star. All right, this is track number 12, All That I Am Living For. Okay. All that I am living for. This is a song that I think I would like on its own or yeah, like with more listens, but separately. This deep into the album, I don't feel like it stands out from the rest enough to pique my interest at this moment. But I think if I listened to it individually, I would really enjoy it. I do feel like there's some really, really good lyrics in here. It didn't feel entirely necessary, but I can see my opinion of it changing for sure. All right, this is track number 13, the last track on this album, Good Enough. Kinda nervous. Oh. Wow. I'm finally getting my piano ballad. I've been waiting for this. I was hoping there would be at least one song on the album that was just her and a piano. I just wanted one. She said, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> ah. Wow. Well, we started this video with me praising her vocals and we're gonna end it the exact same way. Not only does she sound like an absolute goddess on this song, the lyrics to this are just quite deep. There's really a lot to unpack there. It's like self-acceptance, but you're the one person that could kind of rattle that, so please be careful. That's serious. That's no laughing matter. <laughs> but this was absolutely the perfect way to end it. I'm so glad that they chose to do it this way. That 
was excellence. All right, and that's some way somehow already brings us to the end of this album. I was obviously hoping for something in the same realm as Fallen because I have such a such a deep love for that album, but without it being too similar. And I think this was that. There are a good handful of songs on this album that I see myself revisiting. And I think anyone who enjoyed the first album would enjoy this one as well, which is probably the point. It did feel like there was growth and evolution, but it did feel like they stayed very much true to their original sound, which I always appreciate. I'm gonna go ahead and slide a ranking of the album right over here for you so you can see how I felt about everything after my first initial listen. As always, please drop your every and any thoughts in the comments section below. But let me know how you're feeling about these songs and this album, especially now. I mean, this was a good 15 years ago this album came out. So, and that is just about gonna wrap it up for this video. As always, I would like to thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourself and I will see you next time.